will be great in your life. Everyone, anyone, wherever you are, think of yourself as the only one that the great God of heaven, the creator, the redeemer, the savior, the healer, that you think of yourself as just the person. And he came from heaven and he comes for you today. Congratulations. A great thing is going to happen to you. Touch of God. The touch of power. The touch of the supernatural. That mountain in your life is moving away. My online brother there, online sister, son, daughter there, let that word online clear up and let me talk to you face to face and let me bring the power of heaven and the glory of heaven into your life at this very time. All things are changed in your life. <laughs> Father, we thank you tonight and we bless your name. We know that you are the great God, omnipotent God, eternal God, unchanging God. And we know that you love because we have learned that God is love. And that love is coming to everyone today. And I pray every mountain will roll away. Impossibilities will become possible. And your power will touch every life tonight in Jesus' name. Confirm your presence in every life, your power in every life, and confirm great possibilities in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know it is done in Jesus' name. We pray anywhere you are, say a great amen. God bless you tonight once again. We have come for his divine touch. I am here for his divine touch. Let the Lord hear you anywhere you are. I am here. For his divine touch, you will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. I bring an important passage of scripture to you tonight. And we find that in Isaiah chapter 6, reading from verse 5 all through to verse 8. Isaiah chapter 6, reading from verse 5 then said I woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for mine eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts Tonight, your eyes will see. Your ears will hear at the power of God and the power of heaven touches your life. You will feel, you will have, you will possess, you will see in Jesus' name. Look at verse 6 there. In verse 6, then flew one of the seraphims unto me hold on in verse 5 he spoke here on earth and he said i am i am i am mine eyes while here on earth have seen and then he made a declaration he made a confession on earth and immediately an angel a seraphim was sent from heaven your voice on earth 
will attract attention from heaven even at this time in Jesus name I pity the people who come to the presence of God here on earth and they shut their mouths and they close their eyes and they seal their mind and they say nothing oh they say I am so and so and then God will look at me if he wants to do anything let him do you talk you ask you say you confess you declare and as we make the declaration here on earth heaven will pay attention to you that's why after he spoke in verse 5 heaven responded then flew one of the seraphims unto me having a live coal in his hand which had taken with the tongues from off the altar and then in verse 7 and he laid it upon my mouth my mouth he had confessed in verse 5 about my tongue my lips my mouth and heaven responded to what he had confessed and then he said that angel that messenger of heaven laid the fire and the light coal on my mouth and said lo this has touched thy lips heaven sent a messenger a seraphim to tell him that this coal of fire from heaven has touched thy lips, thy mouth. Heaven will confirm your miracle. Angels will confirm your miracle. And then he said, And thine iniquity is taken away. Sin will be taken away. Sickness will be taken away. Infirmity will be taken away. All the deficiencies of your life will be taken away. And then said, thy sin is purged. Let me tell you something. When an angel tells a man, tells a woman, thy sin is purged, there's no doubt anymore. He'll not be wondering, am I forgiven? Am I not forgiven? When an angel from heaven says, all your sin and the consequences of sin, sickness, disease, infirmity, an angel confirms your sin and the consequences of sin are all taken away. There is no doubt in your heart anymore that you are rising up and you are going back home and there is a confirmation and every step you take you'll be remembering that heaven confirmed your miracle today I said today I said today heaven will confirm your miracle and everywhere you go that voice will be ringing, salvation is yours, your sin is pardoned. And then the Lord will be reminding you, I myself sent the messenger from heaven, have cleared your sin and there is no evidence of sin in your life on earth, in heaven anywhere even satan cannot bring that bag that god has taken away i am free i said i am free and then look at verse h there in verse h and i heard the voice of the lord he spoke and the lord heard the lord speaks and he heard understand 
he on earth spoke and heaven heard now god is speaking in heaven and he heard is the two-way communication it's not just that you know i talk i pray i ask i confess i declare and then i don't hear anything from there two-way communication when you come to prayer tonight understand prayer is not a one-way traffic you speak heaven will hear amen you declare heaven will hear but that's one way that's one way that's one way traffic and then the other way heaven will speak to your very heart that two-way traffic will complete your miracle tonight in jesus name also i heard the voice of the lord saying whom shall i send and who will go for us remember god sent a seraphim an angel unto him and now god says i've sent the angel it's not the work in you and through you now that the work has been done salvation has come conversion has come transformation has come through you that has received the touch of the lord can you go for me now and then i said here i am send me here i am send me the lord will send you and tonight he'll send you forth peacefully full of peace full of purity full of power full of confidence and no power will be able to stop your journey from today in jesus name i'm looking at that passage tonight and i'm talking to you on divine transformation through the divine touch divine transformation through the divine touch the three things we're looking at number one the convicting frankness of a concerned person the convicting frankness of a concerned person number two the consuming fire for a complete purging the consuming fire for a complete purging number three the confirmed fullness fullness will come into your life there'll be no empty space for the devil to come and fill there's no empty space for anything that is not of god to come in there your heart your soul your spirit your inner man your personality will be filled with the goodness of the lord and the grace of god today in jesus name the confirmed fullness for a consecrated possessor you will possess i said you'll be a possessor possessor of his peace possessor of his purity possessor of his power possessor of salvation amen possessor of holiness and sanctification and possessor and the baptism of the holy ghost in your life in jesus name and that which you possess from heaven you consecrate unto the lord then that new life that eternal life that abundant life that victorious life that peace that power that purity that possession that you have you come like isaiah said here i am send me 
that which you possess tonight miraculously you will consecrate to the service of the Lord number one now we're looking at the convicting frankness of a concerned person look at Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5 then said I who is this I this Isaiah this is a prophet he had even been preaching from chapter 1 chapter 2 chapter 3 chapter 4 and chapter 5 and now in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord lifted up and his train filled the temple and then I heard the angels of God shouting and saying holy 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 is the Lord of hosts and the whole earth is full of his glory and his majesty when he saw that he forgot I've been a prophet I've been a church man I've been a preacher I have been a soul winner I have been this, I have been that. He forgot all about that. And the vision of the glory of God, the vision of the purity of God, and the vision of the holiness of God brought out what was in him. And he became sincere. And he was frank. You know, as you are there tonight, if you are frank with the Lord, and you are not going to religious history. I am this. I'm a Pharisee. I'm a Sadducee. I'm a Protestant. I'm an Anglican. I am Methodist. I am Catholic. I am Episcopal. I am Orthodox. Forget about that. Today, God wants to give you what is greater than you ever got in your life in Jesus' name. The man didn't go to any religious history. He just said, Then said I, transformation will come to you tonight. New power and new strength will come to you tonight if you just come and say, As you look at your life, you compare, maybe you are a morally good, disciplined person, but then. You compare your morals with that of Christ. You compare your behavior with that of Christ. And you compare your conduct, your lifestyle with that of Christ as it is revealed unto us. And then you say, I do not have the presence, the pardon, the peace, the assurance of Christ in me and you are frank and you are open and you are not hypocritical and you're not hiding behind the name of your church whatever good church you're attending and you say I say woe is me for I am undone when we get to the judgment hall in that great beyond the people who have been proud of their righteousness self-righteousness and they have been proud of their so-called religion the lord will make you to stand before christ beside christ he looks at christ he says that is my only beloved begotten son and then he looks at you and there's a difference and you know all that you try to do by yourself how you try to live by yourself all the goodness of fallen man fallen adam you try to demonstrate it be so far away from the righteousness of christ and then the Lord will say, you're not like my son. 
And because of that, over there in the great beyond, that person is rejected. But you know what? If you come to Christ today and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today, he will take your sin and then he will give you his righteousness. Did you hear me? He will take your sin away. Every form of sin. He will forgive you. He will cleanse you. And then he will give you his righteousness. And then oh, you are covered with the righteousness of Christ. And then on the judgment day when you get there, and here you are, the heavenly father sees God, sees Jesus Christ, and sees righteousness upon him. And then he looks at you, lo and behold, everything that covers you, which Christ has given you, is the righteousness of Christ. And then you say, come on in, come on in, that place that is prepared for everyone, having the righteousness of Christ, come on in, and the Heavenly Father will make you sit down in the kingdom of God, because you possess not your own deficient righteousness, but the righteousness of Christ. That's why I'll be inviting you tonight, when I finish the message, that you'll come and make a great exchange through a way that self-righteousness, that sin that doesn't profit either Pharisee or Sadducee and then have the righteousness of Christ tonight. Congratulations, the Lord will make you righteous. But he had frank confession. And the confession he made convicts us. If a prophet will make a confession like that, who are you? That then will come and say, I am this, I am that. His frankness brings conviction unto you. I remember Peter, when the Lord first met him, and then he said, throw your net there, and then he caught a lot of fish. He said, depart from me i am a sinful man oh lord you see that miracle brought conversion on him if isaiah was frank if peter was frank and here comes zacchaeus zacchaeus said lord half of my goods i give to the poor and if I've taken anything of any man by wrong accusation, I restore him fourfold. He was frank. And then Jesus said, Today is salvation come to this house. Here comes Paul. He said, I am Paul. I'm not worthy to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church, and the Lord said, and then he said, What will you have me do? He turned over his life to the Lord. If Saul, who became Paul, was frank, how about you? Where are you coming from? Who do you think you are? That you'll say, I am this and that. The frankness of Isaiah should bring conviction on everyone and then he said i am a man not that i was now i am a man i go to synagogue i am a man i even try to preach to other people i am a man i even condemn other people that are doing this and doing that and yet he was frank and that's what the lord wants of you of everyone tonight and as you come with that frankness and you say lord i cannot be proud of anything i know my private life i know my hidden life i know my condemned language i know the language of the world that i speak i dwell in the midst of a people upon clean leaves and i'm just like them and i'm surprised that mine eyes have seen the king 
the Lord of glory. And tonight, when you make that frank confession and say, Lord, no pride, no pump pumping of myself, and there's no loftiness in my life, this is my level, this is where I am, this is what my life is. The Lord will wipe away all those sins in Jesus' name. Tonight, you'll be a new man. Tonight, you'll be a new woman. Tonight, you'll be a new boy, a new girl, and a new child of God in Jesus' name. He was concerned. Concerned about making promises and breaking those promises. I will not talk like that again. I will not go to that place again. I will not touch that thing again. I will not browse that thing again. I will not join those people again. He could not make it. There is no power in man to fulfill all those resolutions. That's why he came and said, I'm concerned that all the promises I've been making, I couldn't fulfill them. And the Lord said, what you couldn't do by yourself, He will do it for you. He will do it in you. And then He said, my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. If my eyes have seen, I want my spirit to experience what I have seen. I want my body to experience what I have seen. That frank confession of his conviction was the beginning of an upward move in his life. And today, at this time, I say today, at this time, what you open your mouth to tell the Lord will be the beginning of an upward journey in your spiritual life in Jesus' name. And so, I'm inviting everyone. Somebody who has never been to church, I'm calling on you. Somebody who has never been in a meeting like this, I'm calling upon you. Somebody who has never thought about the application of the vision of Isaiah into his life, I'm calling upon you. Today will be a remarkable day in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Proverbs chapter 28. Reading from verse 13 there, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. The one who knows his secret life, the one who knows his deficient life, and the one who knows his sinful life, but then is hiding that, and he comes and he says, I'm not going to talk like I say. I'm not going to say I'm a man, I'm a woman of unclean leaves. I'm going to pretend. Can you hide anything from God? I said, can you hide anything from God? I say a thought is all holy, through and through. Holy, holy, holy. And he sees everything as in daylight and then he brought everything out and he says i will not hide you will not hide and everything you expose to the lord you say lord i have this the lord will cleanse you your sickness i have this the lord will heal you your infirmity i have this the lord will deliver you and tonight is your night he that covereth his sins shall not prosper but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy i see mercy coming to you there 
I said, I see mercy coming to you there. As you do like I say, and you say, Lord, this is who I am. Immediately, cleansing, transformation, salvation, forgiveness will come to you in Jesus' name. Look at point number two now. The consuming fire for a complete purging. The Lord is ready right now. He will put you. He will take away any sin that is not of God in your life in Jesus' name. Let me explain. Sin of any type is not of God. Sin, common sin, habitual sin, occasional sin, and society sin is not of God. Whatever is not of God in your life tonight, the Lord will purge away. Yeah. Cancer is not of God. Some people say, Pastor, evangelist, preacher, look at my cancer. Are you holding on to it? Or are you accepting it? It is not mine. I said it is not mine. Some people, they give testimony, they say, church, friends, praise the Lord. My diabetes has been now with me for 10 years. And now we're neighbors obliged to live with my diabetes. Diabetes is not mine. Cough is not mine. And pandemic is not mine. Plague is not mine. You know, when I make that confession and thousands of people, they say amen for me. That's why I'm going stronger and stronger. Instead of saying it for themselves, and they should say, cancer is not mine. Tuberculosis is not mine. The yokes of the devil, not mine. Evil spirit, not mine. The Lord will purge away from your life. Number one, he'll purge away all your sin. Number two, he'll purge away every sickness in your life in Jesus' name. And then every suffering, Satan sneaks into somebody's life. And then before he goes, he puts suffering there, put suffering on the child, and put suffering on the husband, and put suffering on the wife, or put suffering on any member of the family, so that all the money you have gathered together, all these many years, you spent everything on sickness and suffering. Tonight, the Lord will purge away will take away all that suffering in your life in Jesus name failure is not mine defeat is not mine premature death is not mine heaven is saying amen to what you are saying the angels are saying amen to what you are saying Untimely death will not claim your life. Those are things that are not of God. And tonight, anything that is not of God, the fire of heaven will come. Will purge and clear everything away from your life in Jesus' name. That's why Jesus said, from the mouth passed on to the mouth of John the Baptist. And he says, he will burn the child with unquenchable fire. 
child child occupying space in your body occupying space in your life occupying space in your family fire somebody shout fire unquenchable fire of the holy ghost will come in your life tonight and burn away everything then I flew one of the seraphims unto me having a live coal in his hand which he had taken of the tongues from off the altar look at verse 7 and he laid it upon my mouth and he laid it upon my mouth you are the man you are the woman that the fire that burns every child you are the man you are the woman anywhere you are today and you are hearing this direct ministration unto you everything of the devil is burnt out of your life in jesus name it says lo this has touched thy lips whose lips thy lips whose lips and thine iniquity is taken away all of his sins the ones he remembered the ones he didn't remember the angel said the seraphim said everything is bundled together and it says it is taken away at the east is from the west so as the lord taking our iniquity our sin our transgressions away from us east west is not talking of east nigeria west nigeria is talking east very far you cannot even see the horizon west very far you cannot see the horizon that's how the lord will take all your sins away even tonight in jesus name and when your iniquity is taken away your transgressions taken away heaven will not remember anymore god will not remember anymore he'll take it away from his remembrance he'll blot it away from everything he has written only the grace of god attached unto you and the forgiveness of god attached unto you and the joy of salvation attached unto you will be your record in heaven in jesus name he will forge you tonight and then he says and thy sin purged thy sin purged thy sin purged sin and all the consequences of sin will be purged away from your life let me let me tell you this i don't know whether you've heard it before it says and the son of god who is that the son of god who is that Jesus. was manifested to destroy all the works of the devil sin sickness suffering infirmity the son of god was manifested to destroy everything out of your life tonight praise god you're free i said praise god you're free number one is the convicting frankness of a concerned person number two is the consuming fire all your sins all your iniquity all your transgression all your sicknesses consumed tonight and you're purged in jesus name 
Number three now. Number three is the confirmed fullness. Four, a consecrated possessor. Anyone that comes sincerely to the presence of the Lord, you cannot live the way you came. Look at Isaiah, and then in chapter 6, verse 5, I am undone. And then he said, Woe is me. And then he said, I am a man of unclean lips at the beginning when he came. And then after that, we have that second point, verses 6 and 7. That what he confessed. The Lord sent seraphims from heaven, and the coal of fire touched him. And now he's told, like he's telling you tonight, your sin taken away. Your sin purged. And now, as you look at him at the end of the passage, it's not like it was at the beginning. You will not be like you were at the beginning. New life. New fullness. New power. New authority. Now, the confirmed fullness. Can I tell you something? When you come to God with your cup, he doesn't feel it only halfway. That's, that's enough. Go. Because his river of mercy is inexhaustible. His ocean of love is inexhaustible. And all this provision, everything is inexhaustible. So when you come, Lord, I have this need. I need salvation. I'll give you. And you stay there. I need healing. It will give you. I need deliverance. You stay there. It will give you. Because after all, what he has for you is inexhaustible. Salvation is needed here before we go to heaven. All those in heaven, they're not making use of salvation anymore. They got it before they got there. And so all the salvation available in heaven is for us on earth. And it's for you. I said it's for you. Yeah. Healing. They don't need healing in heaven. Blind eyes opening, deaf ears opening, and that lame rising up and walking. The perfect over there. The healing that God has is for us here on earth. And so that's why when you come with your cup, it doesn't give you only half of your cup filled because it has fullness. And the fullness is going to be confirmed in your life today. Salvation in full. Peace of God in full the joy of the lord in full healing in full deliverance in full power in full behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions Serpents, scorpions will not be walking over your body after this night's meeting. And over all the power of the enemy, nothing that is fashioned or formed against you shall prosper. You will walk and you will tread on all the serpents and all the evil. Tonight, you're free in Jesus' name. What am I telling you? I'm telling you that whatever God does when you come to him with your cup, it's not going to say that salvation, you can go. It's a witch, that's healing don't go yet that's deliverance don't go yet that is power the power that prevails upon every enemy in your life the fullness of god the lord will give you tonight in jesus name
and then uh, when he sends you forth he'll be sending you forth with the fullness of his peace the fullness of his pardon the fullness of his purity the fullness of his power the fullness of authority in your life from tonight in Jesus name heaven will register and confirm his goodness in your life also I heard the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I say and who will go for us then said I it wasn't uh, you know drawing back anymore it wasn't saying I am not able anymore it wasn't saying I am undone anymore it wasn't saying I'm deficient it wasn't saying that anymore it wasn't saying I am powerless anymore it wasn't saying I cannot confront those people in the village in the town in my place of work I cannot stand I cannot live the Christian life I cannot be a standing testimony anymore he said all that fear is gone all that powerlessness is gone he said here i am send me and the lord is sending you for tonight as a person who is free he's sending you here tonight sending you forth as a person who is forgiven is sending you for tonight as a person having the fullness of god in your life and it will happen yeah. and when you go here am i send me you will go and you will shine the light of christ yeah. you will go and live for god you will go and you will let your light so shine before men that they will see the goodness of god your good and they will glorify your father who is in heaven everywhere you go joy everywhere you go peace everywhere you go there's a testimony in your mouth everywhere you go you'll be an overcomer in jesus name let me show you this before we round up in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 1. In Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also. He had appointed 12. That's not enough. Now he appointed 70 all those 70 people, they have gone to heaven and now you are the next person he appoints. His hand is now on you. His power is now available for you. And the Lord is appointing you. And he sent them, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here are my Lord, send me. And he sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, heal the sick. You'll be healed. You'll be delivered. And then that connection the power of God that healed you, you will transfer that message online to your friend, to people around you, and the message is going to be there. And as you take that message and you send and you share, the healing that has come to you, the salvation that has come to you, will come to them in Jesus' name. Wouldn't it be wonderful? If your friend will send back to you, thank you for that message you sent to me. I was down. Now I'm lifted up. 
I was sick. Now I am healed. I was guilty. But now the grace of God has come unto me. God will use you to bring a saving grace and healing virtue to other people's lives in Jesus' name. Heal the sick that are therein and say unto them the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you verse 17 in verse 17 and the 17 returned again with joy you'll come tomorrow you'll return here tomorrow and you return with the joy of the Lord in Jesus name sin Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Amen. Yeah. In verse 18, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling fall from heaven. As we go, save people. As we go, ransom people. As we go, pardon people. Satan will fall like lightning before you. Yeah. Verse 19. In verse 19, behold, I give unto your power. They came back to the Lord. And because they came back to the Lord, you see, it's that connection. Is that contact that brings greater power, greater peace, greater purity, greater possession in your life? Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all, over, tell me, over, tell me. All the power of the enemy. And now, because you are a possessor, because you are a child of God, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Nothing. Somebody shout, nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Look at verse 20 there. In verse 20, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are reaching, tell me, in heaven. Can you think of the joy of Peter, James, John, Matthew, Bartholomew, all of them, Christ saying that your name is written in heaven. Can you think of the 70? That heaven recognizes you. There's a book of life in heaven and your name is there. Assurance of salvation as you are there tonight. And you come like I say again, and you make a frank confession, and you say, Lord, this is how dirty and defiled and sinful I am, but I trust in the patterning grace of God and the purging virtue of the Lamb of God. It will purge you. And when you are pardoned and purged, then, your name will be written in the book of life in heaven. Yeah. It will happen now. Yeah. Not to let that it can happen, it will happen now. Yeah. To you. Yeah. As you come, you open up, you are frank, and you tell the Lord, then the blood of Jesus himself will wipe away, wash away 
all your sins and then the assurance now you are a child of God and then he'll not just stop there he saves you he heals you he delivers you and he fills you with total blessing tonight and then you go forth in the strength and the power of the Lord ready ready my online brother friend there sister friend there are you ready and everyone in every congregation now heads bowed and eyes closed heads bowed and eyes closed the Lord has shown us how we have the pardon the purging the peace and then our names written in the book of life in heaven and it's just to be frank to tell the Lord Lord here I am as it's about and eyes are closed the Lord is sending to you right now and he's saying I want to forgive all your sins give me a chance in your life I want to pardon you for every bad thing you have said every bad thing you have done give me a chance in your life and if you are giving God a chance to save you to pardon you to erase the remembrance of all those evil things you have done you stand on your feet God bless you that's right you stand on your feet right now your want is pardon you are sincere like I say you are frank like I say you are open not secretive you are open like I say wherever you are where are you the Lord is waiting for you don't carry the blemish back home don't carry the dead defilement back home that's right you stand up on your feet and you say I need the pardon I need the purging I need the cleansing I need the forgiveness thank you God bless you the Lord is still waiting for you don't keep the Lord waiting be sincere be open be frank and tell the Lord oh Lord here I am my friend how long will it take you to make up your mind while God is calling upon you what Christ is knocking at your door and while the promise of heaven is coming to you why don't you say this is my moment this is my time of that cleansing of that purging of that pardon Lord I come you are outside you are inside here you're over there in the congregation or you're by yourself leave everything you're doing now and give total complete attention to Christ your Savior as you stand open your mouth and tell the Lord like Isaiah opened his mouth and told the Lord tell him how sinful you are tell him how dirty you are tell him how condemned you are tell him your trust in his love your trust in his mercy and that he will cleanse you now accept his mercy accept his love 
accept his pardon whosoever cometh unto me I will in no wise cast out as many as received him to them he gave power to become the sons and the daughters of God even to them that believe on his